It's not Chopper. It... I think Chopper's birthday is Christmas Eve. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did I lose you? Uh-oh. Oh, God. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, no! Oh. Oh, he's disgusting. Oh, he's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back to Onesie Peace, where two grown men in onesies argue about a cartoon my name is estevan and i'm the one in the shark costume who hates anime uh my name is wayne i'm the one in the penguin costume and i can't get enough he just slurps it up like a 7-eleven slushy yeah brain freeze every on my day anime. every night just if anime i can't get enough i'm it whacking disgust- off to anime every you chance disgust I me <laughs> i don't actually like anime that much but i do like anime it's okay. I actually do kind of hate anime. I know you do. Yeah. It's kind of gross. I'm sorry. I'm You're sorry. You're kind of a fuck. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> I don't know. Who gives a shit? We're not making any money. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to do? What are they going to do? They're going to kiss you if you're not careful. Ooh, that sounds pretty nice. How are you doing <laughs> on this fine Tuesday afternoon? Oh, I'm doing just great. How are you? You're doing gravy? I'm doing... Oh, I'm I've doing, had the shittiest fucking yeah. day. But enough about me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this week we're going over a dra 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 drama island. I liked the way you did that with your mouth. You don't know how I did that? or you like? I liked the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Baby. Bye-bye. Years of practice. Years of practice. Baby. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> um... Yeah, we talked about Drum Island. Give me one sentence. What did you think of Drum Island? It was a roller coaster of likes and dislikes. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm okay with it. If you say, it was, one thing's for sure, it was fucking a hell of a lot better than Little Garden. Absolutely. It <laughs> like was at miles, least a step forward. Miles better. I'll, I'll give you a mile better. A mile? Maybe miles, but it's at least a mile better. It's a fun one. It's a fun It's one. interesting. It's a, what did you think of Drum Island? I liked Drum Island more this time than I did the first time. Okay. Did you I, like it all the way through, or are there parts you de- don't like? I, I don't have mon- many many things to complain about. Oh, dear. Very minimal. I have things to complain about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say, I so everybody's like, um, a big complaint is that the backstory that you get A lot of people say the backstory is better in the anime than it is in the uh, manga. Is that right? Yeah. Which, uh, so, for the sake of comparison, I went and watched the two episodes. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I will say I liked what they did more with the Doctor's character in the anime. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember his name. I came very ill-prepared. But you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, the quack. Yeah, the quack. Exactly. I liked what they did with his character. I felt like they did it a little bit more justice in the anime. However, I fucking hated... In the in the, in the, in the manga, uh, basically how it goes is Luffy is about to punch Wapole in the face. And then the backstory begins. And it's just straight backstory for the next however many chapters... And then we we come back into it. Um, and I felt like that was really smooth. In the f- freaking anime, it kept going back to Luffy running around being a dipshit trying to get Chopper to like him. And that annoyed yeah. the crap out of me. I'll say that. That annoyed the living crap it out of me. It felt like a big waste of time, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And it's like, I get what you're trying to do, but... It... Like... You're just you giving him more to. reasons to complain about Luffy. That's all I could think about. It's like, Luffy wasn't this annoying in the manga. <laughs> that he chased he chased Chopper down for like one scene, a couple panels. It was a kind of a goof, kind of a gaff. It was funny. And then it was over. They didn't drag it out throughout the whole, but it kind of took away from the backstory a little bit. 
So here's my takeaway from this, like, series of episodes here. Uh I felt like they had the foundation and the building blocks to make a really great arc. Yeah. But then they completely dropped the ball in the second half. I was legitimate. I stopped watching it on two times speed for like most of this arc. You were that intrigued by it. You were like, I was intrigued. Okay. that. I dropped it down to (laughs) (laughs) 1.5. We'll see if we can get them down to 1.0, everybody. We'll see. All right. Don't hold your breath. (laughs) But, but anyway, so like I thought, like I said, foundation for an amazing like story and conflict where I think they've really dropped the ball. It comes down to the inclusion of uh, Wapple. Yeah. I, 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 f- I don't disagree. I Wapples. felt like they could have made a really cool and compelling story had Wapple not been there. <laughs> <laughs> because he kind of takes away the thunder of the main conflict that draws them in. So, like, the whole reason this arc happens is because Nami is sick and they need to find her medical attention or else right. she's going to die. Yes. And they kind of introduce all these interesting characters and dynamics with this this uh, old hag who lives up on the mountain who might be able to save her, but she has her price. Yeah, right, exactly. And, like, <coughs> big obstacle number Sorry. one is getting to her. <coughs> right, big obstacle number two. Giant mountain. Exactly. Giant, very 90-degree mountain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, th- I thought that the big obstacle number two would have been convincing her to Mm. save nami or if not that then haggling with her in order to be able to leave okay i think that would have been a much better like what really annoyed me about this is how it's it's coming down to like why does every conflict in every arc have to end with uh, the straw hats punching their way out. <laughs> yeah. Be- because. Because it's an anime, probably. But I get it. Character, yeah, characters, you're not giving characters the room to grow like that. Um, I feel like characters do their best growth when you, they're presented obstacles and conflicts that challenge them. And they can't always find a way out, you know? Yeah. So when they have to approach a situation in an angle that they've never had to before. Yeah. But we're falling into the pattern of, like, no matter what they face, Luffy's just going to punch their way out of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, part of Luffy's character is that he really only knows how to fight. He doesn't really know. And, that, and, you, and I liked how they showed it in this arc a lot. How he had to restrain himself at certain points to fight, to not fight, and how you could see him literally struggling with it, but and that, he did it, you know. So this might blow your mind a little bit, but for the half of the arc that I liked, <laughs> I was impressed with Luffy. Yes. Okay. Let's start at the beginning. Okay. Let's start it. Let's. I want to get into this because I will say I I kind of saw this coming and it made me happy. I've been excited for this arc because I knew Luffy wasn't a... He's still Luffy, but he shows a lot of care. And so I've been excited to get to this arc specifically for this reason. Um, But there's a lot of pieces I completely forgot about that as I was reading through, I was like, this is what Estevan has wanted all along. There's no way he can complain about this. So I'm I'm glad that you at least admitted it. I understand how the second half was. The first half was he really he he shone bright in the first in the first half. What sure. what I loved the most was Luffy was this character who was like taking in information, processing it in his own way <laughs> and making decisions based on that information which turns out what I thought was a low bar, <laughs> he managed to do. <laughs> exactly. And, and I... it blew my mind that he was meeting that bar. <laughs> good. Good. We're making progress. That's all I ask. But second half done. Second out half out done. of it. He, he, he bar like plummeted again. Like I he don't... was not doing that anymore. It was he... just back to punch his way out, Luffy. Well, I mean, that is true. That is true. Because that is, I mean, that is a big piece of his character. 
I shouldn't he, say punch his way out, Luffy. Just annoying, yell all the time, Luffy. Like yeah. stupid, idiotic, <laughs> imbecile, fool, annoying Which, to watch, Luffy. I mean, he's always gonna be like that, but he has his moments. He has. He his doesn't moments. have to be though. This arc proved that he doesn't have to be. But I mean, I feel like if all of a sudden Luffy was super like serious and thinking, then. That's even but, worse. But then you're just ignoring the character that was created. He can be like a the character that we saw, but still have his optimistic and like lighthearted side. There's a balance that can be struck there. I mean, he's a goofy guy. He doesn't take things too seriously. That's fine. That's fine. As long as he, you know, sh- like acts like a person, <laughs> like, <laughs> thinks about things <laughs> in his own way. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Okay. But he's either, like, one end or the other. He's just, like, not processing anything around him and just doing what he does. Or how we saw in the first half of this arc, he is, you know, he's still being that optimistic, lighthearted fellow, but still making decisions based on what's going on around him. Okay. Okay, I'm curious when the transition happens. So let's start going through. This arc is going to be a test. It's for sure going to be a test because there's kind of, it's pretty heavy. There's a lot yeah. of pieces to it. I want to obviously is. get through it quick. I want to we, we've been trying to cut back on time these last few. We've been doing really good with it. And so we're going to just try to cruise through, hit the main points as we go along and get through this whole arc in uh I don't even know what time we started at this point. We're 11 yeah, minutes in, so an hour, 20 minutes. So let's get going. So for you, did you ever see Smoker? At the end of Little Garden, I said that Smoker diverted course to Alabasta. Did that no, ever happen? That I never saw that happen. All right. Well, it did. Um, <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> um, we find out that Nami is very sick, right? Yes. Immediately. she's She's got a fever of 104, and they immediately, they're heading to Alabasta where a revolution is happening. And they, time is of the essence, getting to Alabasta. But without their navigator, there's all this crazy shit happening on the Grand Line, and, like, they are going to die without her, <laughs> more or less. And also, she's going to die, and so more importantly, they need to save her. Um, the navigator, I feel like was a attack on, right? But right. inevitably, I think Vivi and Luffy and the whole gang, it was like, we can't just let Nami die. That was right. The they were more concerned thing. about their friend dying really than the uh, navigator. their navigator dying. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, so I mean, we see what here for a little bit with the dude standing. Yeah. He just ocean. shows up. Yeah. That was weird. I didn't like that. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. I I don't like his face. I, I oh I yeah, that guy, the guy. Yeah. yeah, he's he's pretty stupid looking guy. He reminds me of some out of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but he's standing on the ocean. When Paul comes out, Luffy quickly beats the crap out of him and shoots him off yeah. like, into the sky. And they they yeah. move on. They yep. move on. They end up at an island called Drum Island, which we learn is a it's a snow island, like a winter island. Yeah, they went into this huge detailed like description of why there's different seasons. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, I don't fucking care, man. <laughs> yeah, Just... that even confused me. They were like, a winter in the winter island is like a double winter. It's really wintry. They 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 do this a couple times throughout this arc as they go really deep into the like explanations, be it like scientific with um the seasonal islands or political with all the world governments and all that. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I don't care (laughs) i i but i find it strange that you don't care because you love world building and that's what it is it's just oda throwing in his little sense about like how the world works yeah but it's not being built organically it's being like shoved down your throat in these huge pieces i don't know i don't think i agree with that it's very at the end of the day they're very small pieces they're just a few minutes in length i I disagree i there i feel like there's like when you divert from the narrative to just explain something for like the next minute or two that's really inorganic and disrupts the flow and all that and like i feel like there's ways to present that information without uh just cutting off the story well yeah no i I, i'm not disagreeing i feel like the seasons thing was kind of out of the blue the world government thing i don't totally agree with that was a little more 
like it, it was it fit in there a little bit more it wasn't like just I think a random what I'm thinking thing of is the uh they broke down how the baroque works organization is and they got into numbers of like oh there's this many members of this oh, level and there's that's this what you're where... thinking of yeah that's what i'm thinking of oh i was thinking of the like a little bit of backstory we get for vivi oh that, that was fine that was just a flashback okay because that was kind of world government related as well yeah you're right. i misspoke so okay i get what you're saying yeah whatever fuck baroque works um <laughs> <laughs> regardless they end up on this island where the people immediately start shooting at them or they yep. or they've pulled their guns out right and luffy yep. naturally just wants to beat the crap out of all of them because it, one they need to get nami to safety and so luffy wanting to get her to safety his first gut reaction is like well let's just beat the crap out of everybody till we find a doctor right not the best choice but you know <laughs> it's a choice <laughs> But this is when we see that first moment of Luffy that I loved. And it's Vivi is basically, basically tells him like, stop. <laughs> we can't just like beat the crap out of all of them. I don't remember the exact reasoning. Do you, is it just because she doesn't want to hurt people essentially? I don't remember. I don't remember. But regardless, um, so he does, he stops, he decides he's not going to beat the crap out of them. And then they shoot Vivi. <laughs> yeah yeah and so then luffy really starts going off the rails and really wants to beat the crap i mean vivi got shot in like the shoulder it wasn't like a deadly hit and she like grabs luffy by the leg and begs him not, yeah, not to fight to. them because you know they think they're all pirates and pirates you know they were the yeah. reason why they wanted to fight him was because they were pirates and because we find out that their island got destroyed by pirates kind of yeah kind of also kind of like saved they, they have a, a bad history yeah they have a bad history with the pirates, pirates got will out of there though but he took all the doctors with him yeah that whole that whole like storyline with uh, wapple and the doctors i thought was so dumb yeah it was forced for sure it, it was like, like you, you know when you like say a word so many times it starts to lose its meaning yeah there were a doctor. couple of words with this arc Doctor, medicine, science, um, what else? There were a couple others that I was thinking of, but those were the main three that really started to, like, lose their meaning for me. <laughs> like, is this an island just, their culture is based around doctors? I know. Like, <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with you, and it was like, we're trying to find an island of doctor or like a doctor, just one doctor. And you're telling me we stumble upon the island of doctors. Right. <laughs> and yeah, what like, are the chances of this? It's every just, doctor on this island, their whole identity is being a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> like, and yeah. I get what he was. Sh the whole point was that we pull being the king, Wapple, whatever, being the king took the doctors away from him. He was being selfish. I get the point that was trying to be made, but I agree that it was kind of a... It was it was forced like, in a little over the top. It was... <laughs> there, there are more clever ways yeah. to, like, push your tyranny on a nation. Yeah. <laughs> Other than, like, taking away their medical supply. I know. Yeah, so I, I agree with you that I didn't love that. But, I mean, it would... At the end of the day, there was base there was two doctors. Realistically, fuck the other twenty doctors. They don't matter. They're yeah. just extras. They're like red suits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can do whatever matter. they want. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Well, I guess three doctors. You know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Regardless, Nami is dying. They need to get her to a doctor. They work it out that there's one up the mountain. They worry about there's one up the mountain. And I think Dalton, who's a character we're introduced to, recognizes yeah. Vivi. Kind of. And that's like how he, he like knows they're not bad. Something rings a bell in his mind. It's like, I think I know her. He, he doesn't make the connection till the very end, though. Okay. Well, regardless, yeah. they accept that they're not evil pirates. Whatever. They find out that the doctor, there's only one doctor in the entire, in the entire island. And she's on top of a huge mountain. Um, and like you said earlier, she's not cheap. <laughs> yeah, she's not cheap. <laughs> she's not cheap. And so, like, 
And and so Luffy and Sanji decide to carry uh, Nami up the mountain. They're warned about some carnivorous rabbits. They're going up. Yep. The carnivorous rabbits, obviously, like they run into them and Giant they start this rabbit like, bears. Yeah, is what they yeah. turn out to be. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought. So was like fun. when they said when they started mentioning carnivorous rabbits, I was like, oh boy, <laughs> this is gonna be <laughs> Here dumb. <we> go. <laughs> yeah. But then these Yetis come out. It's like, oh, that's pretty dope. Yeah. They're just <laughs> giant rabbit bears that can also snowboard <laughs> yeah. at one point. Um, and so, yeah, they face off a little bit. Luffy has to withhold himself from fighting them. Yep. Because every because Nami's slung on his back, so every move that he makes could potentially injure her. Right. Right. Yeah. So he's not happy about it, but he does. Sanji takes the reins. The rabbits cause an avalanche. Yes. By jumping up like, and down with their rabbit feet very high. Yeah. <laughs> Which we come to find out also buried them. So I wonder like how they planned this out. Well, it didn't bury you them. Know? They got on the snowboards then. There we do see some rabbits who like almost died from this <laughs> <laughs> because after the after the like after the avalanche, Luffy walks up and there's like a baby rabbit like mourning over his dead mom, and <laughs> oh Luffy like pulls the mom out of the snow. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, and that's kind of what t- turns the tide, because the rabbits help him later on. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so Luffy saves one of the rabbits. Um, it's Sanji pretty, like, gets a last stuck in the avalanche. Those rabbits. He does. So now Sanji's out. Like, out. Yeah. Luffy's carrying them both, Yeah. and he has to like climb the vertical surface up the mountain. Yeah, and it's like... Sanji in his mouth, <laughs> Nami on his back. Yeah, and his it... mouth. <laughs> yeah. And it's a literal 90 degree angle with, in how he climbs it. We don't think about it. It's a cartoon. Yeah. Right. No big deal. <laughs> but he so does all this. Yeah. All this is happening. And the witch that they're going to find yes. is actually down at the bottom of the thing, which is so a fun. Here's, yeah. She had yeah. left. So even once they get there, she's not going to be there. Yes. However, when they get up, oh, well, she's up there by the time they're, they're up there anyway. Right. It worked so out, but they make you really think, matter. they make the, they build the suspense up a little bit, like, yeah. they're climbing the mountain, the witch isn't even there. Yeah, um, but they do all this to kind of introduce that she's like, she'll heal you, but she has her price, yeah. and that's typically, like, almost everything you own. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately. <laughs> yeah, and this, they introduced this, and I was like, oh, dope, this is sweet. Yeah. Like, how, like, this is something, like, she's gonna ask, She's going to heal Nami, of course, but she's going to ask the Straw Hats for something that they're not going to be able to, like, give up. And that's going to create, like, this interesting conflict that doesn't, no. It didn't happen like that. It never really comes up. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I mean, at one point she says, I'm going to, like, well, it kind of does. She Nami gives her the key. It, beco- it becomes, like... A forty-second little interaction yeah. between Nami and the witch. Pretty it, much, it, it never, it never it, really. It, it doesn't anything. go anywhere for sure, for sure. Yeah. It's interesting you say that though, because that thought never even crossed my mind. Oh really? Yeah. I was really excited to see like a conflict for an arc that wasn't just beat up the bad guy. Yeah, I mean, and maybe a part of it was just because I've already seen it. Yeah, that's and so you know, I, that's why it never crossed my mind, but. <laughs> But having them face face like a situation that will force them to grow uh-huh. is what I've been waiting for, and they just teased me with it. They just teased. They you. just teased me. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But like, yeah. So then, which uh, grabs them out of the air as they start to fall because Luffy just can't make it to the top, yeah. and I thought that was awesome. Like, finally, a situation where they fail. Like, <laughs> not because I want to see them fail, like, for the spite of it, yeah. but because I want them to s- face challenges that they can't they, overcome. That, exactly. Right. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Because, I mean, I, I get it. The Grand Line was built up like this huge thing, and thus far, they've just breezed through it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's been a couple of moments that kind of hindered them, but <laughs> for sure. I feel you on that. I feel yeah. you on that. This is the moment where it all starts going downhill for me. Once they reach the top. So when, the yeah, whole when backstory. Luffy is snatched out. When Luffy is snatched out of the air is when it starts going downhill for me. Okay, so Luffy gets snatched out of the air. They are on top of the mountain with the witch who has decided to take care of Nami. Mm-hmm. 
and them. Really. And Sanji, yeah, because Sanji's he has like broken ribs. He, Sanji's pretty he's beat up. Bro- yeah, he's yeah he's got broken everything. Yeah. Um, and Luffy is you know pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> Luffy's cold, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but there was there was a moment at the top where Luffy faints. So that's when yeah. he falls from and they save him. But like Yeah, he, he regains wake- consciousness for like a couple seconds yeah. to tell them like they're my friends. They're my friends, you need to save yeah. them. Which I thought was a nice moment. I, yeah, I enjoyed okay. It. That I, was that was good. <laughs> I was like, he really he did all this for them, you know? Yeah. Good job, Luffy. Um so, I mean, you find out she has a pet reindeer named Chopper. <laughs> Which is where things start getting real interesting. Because he's a reindeer that can talk. This, okay. So, another <laughs> another thing to my list of words that lost meaning to me. Reindeer? Nose. Nose. <laughs> Why blue does nose? anyone give a shit that he has a blue nose? He was I... kicked out of his reindeer pack for having a blue nose. He's like... I can never be your friend. I have a blue nose. Like, <laughs> clearly this world has established that the color of your nose doesn't matter. <laughs> I will say that the manga didn't focus on the nose as much. They the manga the focused so on the much. fact that he was a monster. Luffy calls him a monster a lot. <laughs> yeah, and that but makes him they sick. really, they really lean on the nose thing. <laughs> I don't. The nose thing was only brought up a few times, from what I remember. <laughs> It was more the fact that he was not a human, but not a reindeer. Yeah, it was somewhere in between. He was stuck in between, and therefore he didn't fit in with the humans, and he didn't fit in with the reindeer. And everybody just wanted him to die, because both sides thought he was a monster. Um, which I think is a better angle to take than Blue Nose. <laughs> he had a Blue Nose even before he ate the fu- fruit, so <laughs> I don't get the Blue Nose thing. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's just a parallel to Ra- Rudolph. I think that's literally the extent of it. Yeah. That's it. He was like, I can't do I mean, red nose sh- because, you know. You see a lot of, like, uh, shots of him, like, guiding a sleigh across the moon. Yeah. So. There's very, like, Santa <laughs> references throughout this yeah. arc. The, the witch doctor, she has a flying sleigh that Chopper sits at the front of. And, like, Chopper can't fly, but the sleigh he, can. He can and he leap. just, like, I guess pretends. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he, like, has a super leap. He has, yeah, he can leap really far, so maybe that's all it is. Maybe yeah. he's just leaping her down. And then sometimes he actually sense. just runs across a rope, and it looks like they're flying. Oh, is there you go. I didn't even put those together. Sometimes those little details get lost in the manga. It's hard to differentiate what's going on with the black and white. I didn't even put right. that together, so there we go. <clears throat> so, um, Chopper ate the human human fruit. He's not a human that ate the reindeer reindeer fruit. He's a reindeer that ate the human human fruit. <laughs> because of course he is. <laughs> what's your, I mean, what's your thoughts on Chopper? He's a cute so, little guy. What would have happened if a human ate the human human fruit? I assume they just would sink in water. <laughs> 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 That's the only difference. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they have I'm, just hindered themselves greatly. <laughs> I'm getting super sick of fruits. I'm getting su like just get rid of fruits. Every every other person has a superpower. I'm fine with accepting that. The fruits aren't going anywhere. <sighs> just enjoy the fruits for what I they hate are. the fruits. Just- I hate that like they're all named with like two identical words in front of it like human her, human fruit gum gum fruit <laughs> chomp chomp fruit smoke smoke fruit i'm getting sick of it wait <laughs> i'm getting so sick of it That's it annoys the- me and it's a i don't know i don't even know what ki- what type of like story element they're supposed to like make up i think they're just, just in- i think just fun powers at, but like we see a lot of people with fun powers that don't have fruits. I yeah, I think. I mean, I. <laughs> so I, I basically, he, where that lands me is, we can get rid of fruits, and at least a little bit of my annoyance goes away, and nothing well, changes. <laughs> but you can't. The fruits are further differentiated from everything else. You couldn't just have Luffy be a gum gum man without the fruit. You can't just be like, I learned how to turn myself into rubber. <laughs> like, but that would we, be even dumber, let's be honest. <laughs> if we have a world that just, like, you know, sometimes people have superpowers. 
I'm fine with that. Yeah, well, that's not yeah. the route he took. <laughs> I I mean, the fruits are supposed to be this blend of, like, ridiculous, stu- like, it's kind of a joke. Like, you come across occasional really serious ones. Like, Smoker is kind of a serious one. You know, he's just a man who's also smoke. But, like, you just, he, he, Oda knows that what he's making is ridiculous. (laughs) He knows that a man shooting boogers is stupid, and that's what he likes about it. And he knows that a rubber man being the main character is a dumb premise. I think he wants to prove that he can make it work. That's what my guess is. That's what my guess is, too. I have this, like, thought in the back of my head, like, how did he come up with this? And I always tend to fall back on, like, he was probably having a conversation with the guy about what would be the most powerful superpower. And he said, (laughs) if you were rubber. And the other guy said, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And then he started thinking, well, if you're rubber, you can do, like, rubber bazooka and rubber, like, other powers. (laughs) And he just got so fixated on this idea. And just it became One Piece. I could see it. I could see that. Well, I mean, remember, he's been making this since seventh grade. I could yeah, 100%. That's the, type of, that's the type of conversation I'd have in seventh grade. Yeah, I could 100% <laughs> see that being how it happened. <laughs> I, I will say that I remember when I was first starting One Piece, I was like, he's made out of rubber. That's the dumbest thing I've ever freaking heard in my entire life. <laughs> and I, I love Luffy. <laughs> And I will say that he does some creative things with the rubber sometimes. It sounds really stupid. It's like, what can you do being rubber? Well, he shows you. You know, he does some kind of cool things that you wouldn't expect. He also does some really lame things with it. <laughs> but, you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> yeah, I hate it when he blows up like a bubble. Yeah, like I a think bubble. that's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but I like when he, like, wraps his... To build, like, momentum and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's like cool. A cool. I like that. One. Yeah. So, that's... You, you, you take the wins with the losses. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he blows up like a balloon. Sometimes he makes it a super megaton punch or something. Well, we're introduced to some pretty dumbass fruits in this one. So Is there <laughs> we multiple? Got... Well, yeah. yeah, Wapple. His is and pretty stupid. I, I think his cronies... Oh, his cronies do have fruits. Do, do they for sure? Yeah, I know at least uh, does Oxman have? does. Oh, yeah, Oxman does. Well, that's not that and, stupid of one. No, his is pretty cool. I like his. Um, but Wapple can turn into a house. Um, <laughs> no, he can eat things and turn into whatever he eats. Uh, that one guy has a static afro. Yeah, is that a fruit or is that like the paint? Does it matter? No. I, but I, ever since the paint, my world's been flipped upside down. <laughs> I just assumed they were all fruits, and now you're telling me that there's this paint, magic paint. The afro didn't seem that fruity. He just, his afro was just staticky. <laughs> and the other guy's boogers blow up. <laughs> That's more fruity, though. That's, like, obviously know. a fruit. He's exploding Any superpower, I just assume. This guy could have just rubbed a balloon on his head. and <laughs> Just, like, whenever, whenever anybody is just not looking, he's just, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <What? laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at all if that was what came out. That is totally like one of those like Oda little Oda question pages. Like, how is his afro always so staticky? <laughs> well, young one, actually, turns out whenever the camera pans away, he's just constantly refilling his static with balloons. I could gen- but he keeps genuinely it see that. <laughs> Is, then the other guy, the he the, just uh, shoots arrows. What does he do? The Alice guy, he can turn, he can light those arrows on fire at will. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But do and you I'm like- just assuming that because uh, what's the guy, Breton, the ox guy? Duh, yeah, uh, D- Dalton, 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 something like that. Yeah, that's the one. I'm assuming because his is a fruit. Theirs is a fruit, too, because they are they were kind of on, like, the same level under Waffle. For sure. I'm trying to find out. Whether his afro is a fruit or not? Yeah, I need to know. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll wrap up the rest of the arc while Uh-oh. you do that. <laughs> well, I went to his, um... I went to his page in control f fruit and nothing came up. <laughs> He's just a staticky man. I think he's just a staticky man. 
All right. Does it say? Fine. Anyway. Yeah, keep so, going. Keep going. So, uh, Nami is still resting. She has a couple days left before she's fully recovered, and Hag will let her go. Neither of them um, have fruits. Go okay. on. <laughs> um, in the meantime, Wapo, who was the former, like, king of this island, yep. shows back up and um, wants his castle back, and so they fight. And then there's this huge, like, melodramatic moment where Luffy is like, you don't know what it means to be a pirate, and then flings him off into death or whatever. Straw Hats win. Little Chomper Boy goes with Straw Hats. <laughs> what? You didn't like the moment with Luffy and the flag? No. Nah. Why? Because, like, we've talked about this before. <laughs> like, I feel like this, Lu- not maybe not the show, but Luffy specifically has this very romanticized and bloated idea of what pirate means. Like, to me, it, uh, when I think of a pirate, I'm thinking of, you know, thievery, yes. uh, mur- uh, murder, backstabbing, debauchery, like, all these terrible things. And to him, pirates mean honor, uh, faith, yeah. belief in yourself. Mm-mm. Adventure on the open seas. Kinda. But do, to he him, uses those pi- words specifically. To him, pi- he uses those words specifically during the speech. Does he? He does. He says this flag means having or having faith <laughs> or something like that. I. Okay. I'll, I mean, I guess I gotta go back and read it. I always just have associated Luffy thinks pirates are freedom. That's the association. That's like it. I mean, I guess freedom to it in, I don't know, maybe not though. There's definitely not going to be there. We don't have to get into it. I, the, the, the problem is that you're once again imparting real world values on a fictional world. Where pirates clearly aren't what you're saying. I mean, some of them are, for sure. You got people like Don Krieg and well, Wobble yeah. to an extent, honestly. Like, what gives me hope is, and why I'm holding on to this is because... That conversation has happened in world between Nami, I think, and Luffy. Like, you have no idea what real pirates are. And right. like, characters have tried to tell him, like, this isn't what pirates are. Well, and that's true. Yeah, so I, it is, like, yeah, you're not wrong. And then you have, like, they came to town and everybody hated them because they were pirates. People yeah. do have a very negative outlook on pirates. So I guess, yeah, it's, I mean, it, inevitably, maybe it's just Luffy's stupid. I mean, we know yeah. Luffy's stupid. We know Luffy's stupid. But, like, and so to him, he has just associated it with these values that aren't necessarily true to everybody else, but are true to him. And okay. true to the people such as, like, Shanks that he looked up to, who is a very noble pirate. We think. His, we don't really know anything it, about him. True. I mean, but from what we pro- saw... Pro- Luffy probably doesn't even know that much about him, because he no. just go off on things, He was come there back. for, like, a month. Yeah. I don't know. Um... But from what we saw, he from what Luffy well that and that's exactly it. Luffy might not have known much about him, but from what Luffy saw, that's what he was. Yeah, and so I guess for me, like with that in mind, it mm-hmm. takes away from these moments where Luffy is trying to like talk down on others for what he thinks a pirate is. Well, he's just te- he's he's saying this is what I believe in. You know. Yeah, but so chances are he's still wrong even in that world so it's like <laughs> like sure well, have have your big speech on top of the castle like you're wrong though <laughs> but he doesn't care that he's wrong all he wants to do is fight for what he believes in and that's what he's yeah. doing he's fighting for what he believes in he doesn't care what you think he's telling you what he thinks and so in this case that's what he was that's all he was doing he's not just gonna be like you're right Pirates are mean. Like, he's going to fight for what he believes a pirate is, because that's all that he knows. I, my solution to this would have been, don't have that, like, in, like interaction. And if, he, if you really want a rousing speech at the top of the castle, don't make it about what it means to be a pirate. Make it about, you know, like, anti-tyranny or something. I mean, But then you'd have to go back and change, like... What whole what his whole t- uh, tyranny strategy is, which I'd be still be okay with because I think it's dumb. <laughs> In fact, get rid of him altogether from the Ark. The Ark doesn't need him. <laughs> I I mean, wait, are you talking about Wapal? Wapal? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I keep calling him Wapal. Um, yeah, I mean, 
it's basically anti tyranny. Really, what what Luffy does is he he doesn't he he judges people based on their character, and that's it. If they're if he feels like they are a good person, he has no issues with them. But if he feels like they are a bad person, he takes very he takes a lot of issue with it. And in this case, obviously, where Paul's a pretty shit fucking guy. <laughs> And he annoyed me so much. He's, he's another one of those characters that just yells all the time and yeah, he's a turns shit. into houses. He's a bad villain. He yeah. turns into houses. He eats guns and like metal and then turns into them. And then what did you think about the fusion? <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> so I legit laughed out loud. There was a few moments that I don't usually, I don't remember laughing much when I was watching the anime, but the manga panels really crack me up sometimes. So when I was preparing for this, for this episode, mm -hmm. um, I was thinking like, you know, how am I going to present my thoughts on, <laughs> on this? On the fusion specifically? Not necessarily the fusion, but that whole battle sequence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I landed on something along the lines of this. <laughs> I really enjoyed the arc up until halfway through, or at least up until the point where uh, heads start to clash and thus starts probably about the stupidest hour of television I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the fight. That's the fight. That's the fight. So I, I can mean, take everything key, else. We, the, the fight key was moments, the moments we had the fusion. I I lost brain cells during this fight. <laughs> I mean, I get it. It definitely not the <laughs> best fight in the world. It was it was I, it was meant to be played up for being stupid as well. And then there's this one moment where Chopper like holds up his hands in his hooves. Yep. And um, you see, like, this reticle, like, zoom across screen until it centers in yeah. in between the <laughs> hooves. He, he's finding the weak point. God damn, that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of his powers. Why can't his power just be, like, different, like, the spectrum of in between badass reindeer and badass human, you know? Yeah, Instead, I mean, he's got a to lot have of them seven, were. This was one seven, that wasn't... No. <laughs> He has seven distinct transformations. Yeah, which is a science set in place by the sh by the world because he he pulls off three transformations and then the house is like, or not the house but the the fusion guy is like, mm -hmm. now I've seen all your transformations. Um, you you can only have three after all. Yeah, and then Wapple's like, no, I have seven. What? And Wapple said, you mean Chopper? Yeah, Chopper. Chopper says. Well, the only no, reason he had seven. seven was because of the little, little thing he ate. What I'm saying is, it wasn't like he just. Why had does there seven. need to be a number? Why can't he just have transformations? Is the spectrum between little reindeer and big bad man <laughs> beast, and then just whatever in between? He's I don't just care. setting down rules. So the rule is for the zone type: expect to see three transformations. Why does there have to be rules, man? Why does there have to be rules? Because otherwise you could just do whatever you wanted. I kind of like the rules. Otherwise he could just be like, I'll just make him a werewolf. That's close enough. <laughs> but like, at least he's limiting himself. So every time we come across this zone type, which was introduced, is one of the devil fruit where people can turn into animals or animals into people. Um, there will be three transformations that you see. I just don't think that's necessary. Like, I think it'd be cooler if, like, whenever we come across these zone-type people, like, all right, the, so this person's, like, half man, half shark. Uh-huh. Like Arlo. Uh, but he's not a fruit. <laughs> oh, yeah, like you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, like, cool. He can, like, he's going to have, like, powers ranging anywhere between being just a full-blown shark to being, like, this awesome, like... What are those like street street sharks? Oh, Remember the, those uh, from the, 90s? the battle sharks! Battle yeah. sharks! <laughs> I did love like, battle I, sharks. I don't need the. Uh, yeah, me too. We should make I, a I podcast about have, battle like, sharks, right? <laughs> I don't need there to be like distinct rules. Like, okay, he only has three transformations. If he does anything else, I'm my mind's supposed to be blown. I want I want them to blow my mind with the with the creative shit they do within the spectrum. I get it. I get it. Yeah, you can't do whatever you want. There's a spectrum there. So. 
I, I get it. But I mean, you can kind of do it within the three, I guess. You st Every time we come across them, you don't know what they're going to turn into, but you know that there'll be three. And then that's it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's that's fair. That's fair. I get it. I get it. And, maybe, and it would line up because... I just boil it down to, like, it's a pet peeve that anime always puts down these rules. Yeah. And it's like, you know, just be creative with it, dog. I, yeah, I get it. As, as long as you don't throw something out of left field. I like rules in that you're setting yourself to a standard. But I don't like it when you when rules are broken. But like you said, it's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. So you, a shark can't become a werewolf. Right. That's not how that That would works. be weird. That would be yeah. weird and stupid and break the rule. It, there is a rule with the spectrum. It's just yeah, not as laid out. It's not as... Exactly. Yeah. Um, you still haven't told me what you think of the fusion. <laughs> oh, yeah, that that contributed a lot to the stupidness of it all. Yeah. It <laughs> that was so dumb, and I hated every moment of looking at him. <laughs> I laughed so hard when they just came out strapped together. That was it. They just had belts around them. <laughs> they didn't fuse at all. See, I liked it because... I, I like One Piece that it's, like, not afraid to make fun of itself and make fun of kind of anime. That's what it was doing. A trope is that they fuse together and become super awesome, like, you know what I mean? And so it was like, eh, <laughs> we'll just put a belt around them. They didn't fuse at all. They're just going to pretend like they fused. But they're really the, just two guys stacked on top of each other. I thought it was it funny. I like that. If, if it we was serious all the time, then the serious moments wouldn't be as great. If we can say that that was truly satire... It was 100% satire. I'll accept it then. <laughs> it was still really dumb, and I hated it, but I'll accept it as satire. It was definitely satire. What else would it be? I don't know. I don't watch he anime. He wasn't trying to be badass. He was, he was. I'm just. I'm just a guy watching a show, <laughs> judging what's in front of me. All right, that's fair. It doesn't go any <laughs> deeper than that. You see it, you like it, or you hate it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was I'm totally a simple satire. man. It was a okay. lot of One Piece is satire. I'm, tr I'm trusting you. <laughs> it's like a. It's like a comedic anime in a way. If somewhere out there back in 1999, Odo was drawing this guy thinking, oh, this guy's badass. <laughs> he definitely wasn't doing that. I'm ending you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've rambled on about, I agree, the end fight. It, I, I have mixed signals about it. Because I didn't love the fight, but that's because I like serious fights. But I understand what he's trying to do if every fight was just a super serious fight it would get really dull really quick and so like he kind of he likes to throw curveballs at you like and he likes to like put limits like sanji couldn't fight this fight because he was still wounded he likes to do yeah. limits like that and like all of zoro's fights he's like wounded in one way or another you never get to see him like at full power there's always something and i Enjoy Zoro that. Zoro really didn't fight in this one, did he? No, he beat the crap out of the town. Or, like, Wapal's men. Oh, he got right, cold. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he wanted the coat. Yeah, and he wanted the coat, so he killed them all. Yeah. Um, once again, Zoro just being a total badass and having no issue taking down whatever's in front of him. <laughs> Zoro's very powerful. He's very strong. He, he has yet to, other than Mihawk, he has yet to have a single challenging fight. And he can swim. And he can swim. See? Exactly. But we should probably get into the backstory. Little Chomp Chomp. Little Chomp Little Little Chomp Chomp's backstory. Six years ago. Little Chopper ate the devil fruit. The human human fruit. He was ostracized by his herd. <laughs> he was ostracized. Exactly. He was then ostracized <laughs> by people. Who wanted it was it was a it was a very Frankenstein's monster situation. That's the vibe I yeah. got from it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and they were like trying to shoot him and wanted him to die because he's because he's a monster. That's literally it. Right. But they thought he was like an abominable snowman. They were scared, you know. Yeah. Um. But what did you think of? Oh, what is his name? I gotta find Doctor Humalik. Himaluk. 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 I think that sounds right. 
I can probably find out. Here a look. Here a look. Here a look. All right. <laughs> oh, uh, on the list of words of the lost meaning, quack. Quack. They said the two episodes I watched. They said quack. They didn't say in the manga for the record. But the two episodes I watched, I was like, why do they have to say quack so much? They said it so much. <laughs> need a quack counter on here. Yeah, right. Um, I was then, thinking about it. Like, I need to start writing this down. Quack doctor. Um, <laughs> yeah. What would what, you think of him? He's an of him or fellow. the... Him, I specifically. Mean, as a character. So... Yeah, intriguing is a good word. I feel like he could have been really cool if they if they made some like minor tweaks here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, he was super gun ho about like you know medical science and being a doctor and all this. Like we talked about that. Mm-hmm. I think it would have been uh, more interesting if he was a little bit more on the like snake oil salesman type alternative medicine kind of guy. Instead of, like, breaking into people's houses and forcing them to take his medicine, he more yeah. just was, like, a sleazy businessman, kind of. Yeah. And he, he still was set... Not necessarily businessman. He was still he would still be set out to, like, help people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in his own way, you know? Like, he, he pushes this idea of, like, medical science. Yeah. Like, constantly. That's in his, like, his, uh, his rhetoric a lot. His <laughs> medical science. For sure. Um, but then you see him, like, inject a syringe into a coughing man, and he turns into a frog. Yes. Well, I think so, that, I think once again, the joke has flown over your head. <laughs> well, no, I think I get the joke. It's just, like, I felt like, I don't know, like, I, uh, explain it to me. <laughs> well, I mean, the, he, he, he's not a good doctor. <laughs> That's the joke. He think well. I mean, in a way, a lot of what he he's he kind of treads the line between like good and evil in a way, because like he does mean well and he does want what's good for the world, but he's like to the point where it's a huge flaw, <laughs> and he's hurting yeah. people, and he doesn't really care because he want he he injected that dude with the frog whatever which turned him into a frog man <laughs> he thought it was gonna help him um, yeah i guess where my issue lies is that he's constantly using words like doctor medical science mm-hmm. and like all that when obviously like he's not yeah, at all <laughs> for sure but then i i feel like if he was alone it would have been more of an issue to me but whenever they compared him to the actual witch doctor it was obvious he had no clue what he was doing <laughs> compared right. to her. Like she, he would go to her for medical advice and it's like, well, you're the doctor. And so he j- he was gung ho on finding the one thing, which was the cherry blossoms. Yeah. He was that super was his into this idea moment. that cherry blossoms would cure the world. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And that was from what I 30 years of research into cherry blossoms. Exactly. And he got there, kind of. He did. Ish. No, he got there. It's like smoke. He figured it out. He figured (laughs) out the cherry blossom smoke. Smoke cloud, really. (laughs) That fell in a certain way that looked kind of like a cherry blossom. He he made he made the oil for his jewel. And they just turned it into cherry blossoms. (laughs) Yeah. So um, he essentially sees Chopper lying on the ground, dying because he's been shot up, and being the good doctor he is, wants to help him. Yep. Um, and he does. This was an interesting point, though, because this was one point... Like, he is, like, quack doctor, but in this one moment with Chopper, he actually did know what he was doing and did, like, bring him back to recovery. So I... He gets lucky every once in a while, you know? Even a broken clock's right twice a day kind of thing. Um, Chopper thinks he's going to hurt him because Chopper's scared and beats the crap out of him, in which Himalog shows him that he's not by unclothing himself. <laughs> yeah, and hanging everything. <laughs> and hanging everything his from his dome. boner. At that point, yeah. you don't not... <laughs> you gotta! <laughs> he, he, Why he, he had one... <laughs> Uh, up for debate, but 
That, he, that's how much he loves medicine, dog. That. What did you think about this? Did this point confuse you? Because it confused me a little bit. Yeah. The, 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 the one minute he's on the ground bleeding, the next minute he's butt naked, standing there telling Chopper that he's not going to hurt him. That, like... When was the last time you saw a old naked man <laughs> screaming at you that he wasn't a threat and believed him? <laughs> the only thing I could really come to the conclusion was that Chopper being an animal, it was kind of animalistic to get like butt naked and also put him in a very like vulnerable position. So like... In that way, maybe he was trying to show Chopper that he wasn't a threat by putting himself in the most vulnerable position he could think of. Maybe. There were a couple of uncomfortable moments in this arc. There were some weird did, ones. Did you get the moment where, like, um, uh, Sanji was coming out of the snow and, like, I think it was definitely towards the end, I think. Uh, Nami was pulling Sanji out of the snow and he was like, I'm so cold, the only thing that will warm me are your two billowy... And then it camera zooms in on Nami's breasts, and then Nami <laughs> smacks Sanji into the ground. That did not happen at all. But that, I I was forced to watch that. That so. doesn't surprise me. What do you yeah, think? Of, that, what do you What do you think about it? I was uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it goes away, and you won't have to deal with it ever again. Yeah, I'm sure. Sanji's a gentleman. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um I didn't have that one. I'm jealous. <laughs> the I can't think of any other uncomfortable ones. It was just that. Yeah. It was just that. What did you think of so Chopper lives with the doctor, Hiroluck. Yeah. For like yeah. a year till he's fully recovered. And then Hiroluck tells him to go away. And starts like shooting at Chopper. To make him right. go away. Um, I mean, I kind of figured, you know, like, when when this starts happening, like, first thought in my head is, like, he's protecting Chopper from something. Right. Which yeah. I think is exactly what Oda wants you to think. He obvi Obviously, you know that there's, like, something else going on behind the scenes. You just right. don't know what it is. Yeah, it turns out he's dying and... He doesn't want Chopper to see him die. Yeah. I agree. It kind of fell flat. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I really like these moments when you when the reveal happens and I like agree with it. <laughs> I, I I can really enjoy it. And be like I when it's kind of more humanizing and you're like, I see why he did that. But to me it feels like distancing your best friend by making them think you're a horrible human being so that they don't have to watch you die is worse than just watching you die. Yeah. Because <laughs> eventually man, they're going to... That's worse on Chopper's mentality than just yeah. watching him die. His already fragile mentality. <laughs> yeah. The one person who ever, like, loved him in any way. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't matter because Chopper finds out or Chopper, like, eavesdrops yep. while uh, Hero Luck is talking with um, <coughs> Old Lady Witch. Old and Lady so, Witch. And so, and then the very next scene for me was Chopper and Hero Luck walking down the street together where they both overhear some guards talking about this special mushroom that mm. heals anything. Oh. And so, like, Wait, when did that make... When did that, like, makeup happen? Because they're both just buddy-buddy again walking down the street. That must have supposedly have been a flashback within the flashback. For, in the manga, it happened earlier. Okay. It, it happened really before no they sense. had their falling out. They overheard the guards. Okay. So that's really weird, though, that, yeah, they did it in that order. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it happened before. And so I'm assuming okay. that was supposed to just be a flashback of the flashback. <laughs> they did not make that clear. <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, so Chopper goes out to find the mushroom, comes back all beaten because he ran into troubles. But he has the, the mushroom. other reindeer. Yeah, the other reindeer. They didn't like him being back, and so he no. fought him for the mushroom. 
Yeah, and he, he came back pretty battered. He was he got beat up pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. But he won. Um, he won. He won the mushroom. <laughs> and uh, turns out the mushroom's poison. But they don't know that yet. <laughs> they don't know. They <laughs> Chopper don't. thinks it's the mushroom that cures like all sorts of crazy diseases, which I yeah. guess in a way it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the disease, disease definitely goes away. Yes. So he makes like a soup for Hiraluck and tells him to drink it and says it'll make your... Did we mention that Hiraluck's dying? Did we? Even... Yes. We did? Yes. He's yeah. dying of, I don't know, like cancer or something. Something, whatever. Something more. He has like a week or two to live or something. He's dying of die in 10 days disease. Yes, the die in 10 days disease. And so he drinks up Chopper's soup knowing full well that it's poison. Yeah. Um... And then he marches off to save all the doctors that... Who have just been taken captive Which have by... Been, not captive, but, like... They supposedly well, have captive. a, like, disease that's going to kill them all. And then if all the doctors yeah. die, the town's going to die. So he's going to save them, but it was just a trap. Yeah. Because, well, Paul wants him dead. And he's relieved because now he has this nitroglycerin <laughs> shot. Which was interesting. I didn't totally yeah. get that either. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, yeah, don't worry, Chopper, your thing's not going to kill me. He drinks the nitroglycerin and blows up. Yeah, he explodes in a very huge explosion, um, which leaves Chopper distraught. Chopper was going to save him, I guess, or see yeah, him. Yeah, Chopper found out at the last minute that it's poison because oh. someone, like, the witch pointed out, like, you see that skull next to this mushroom? That yeah. <laughs> I didn't love it. That means deadly. Yeah, I'll admit I didn't dumb. love this whole plot point. Because yeah. you had Hiraluk who idolized basically the pirate flag. Yeah. And so Chopper, I get, I get it though. At the same time, Chopper's like a, basically doesn't understand anything about human society at all. Yeah. And so Hiraluk builds this like skull and crossbones up to be a really good thing. Yeah. Like it's a sign of freedom. It's a sign of what whatever. And so Chopper thinks it's a good thing. And so when he sees it in the book and also he overheard the guards talking about the mushroom, he assumes it means, like, it's going it, to cure you. Yeah, he assumes it doesn't mean that it's poison. Yeah, he assumes it doesn't mean it's going to kill you in an hour. Um, but there's kind of a lot of layers to all of this at the same time. Yeah, so that this kind of brings me on to, I think, what is my maybe last complaint about this arc. <laughs> all right. There is a lot of, like, shit going on. Yeah. And a lot of it ultimately doesn't come to anything. Example being the witch's price for healing. Uh Uh-huh. And I feel like if we just boiled it down to a conflict between the Straw Hats dealing with this witch asking for something impossible Mm -hmm. from them, I think that would have made out to be a really cool and interesting arc. But instead, they inject you with, like, all this, like, Oh, Chopper's backstory with the layers within that. It also, like, there's Wapple with, like, this history being the king and, like, trying to get all that back. Yep. Then you have uh, Dalton, who used to work for Wapple, and now he's trying to make amends with his own guilt for, you know, and, like, trying to lead and all this. And you have different different towns, and it's just a lot going on. <laughs> there, It is. It's a lot to keep up with. Hey, I, and, I then, agree. and then towards the end, they start dipping in what I'm assuming will lead into the next arc with the world government and Alabasta and all that. What What are you referring to specifically when you say that? Like uh, Alabasta and the world government? Yeah, yeah. Like what moment? Yeah. So um, mm-hmm. it's it's when it's when I'm assuming they're just building up for the next arc. They're talking about like the foundations of the civil war, which I had already assumed was going on, but it turns out it's just like. It's it's a it's Tinder waiting for a spark, right? Yeah, like it's a, like it's climax almost. Like yeah. things are gonna and go bad real quick any day now. Yeah, and it's crocodile like turning the citizens against the king for mm-hmm. what? Like um, not doing anything against pirates or something? Is that right? Or am I? Is there something else? No, I think that's it. Because Alabasta is being plagued by pirates. Crocodile is. Uh, he's one of the seven warlords. Of the pirates. Yes, so he's helping so he, to get rid of the pirates. Yeah, I don't think he, the citizens know that he's a, a warlord. Well, the, the he, they 
I don't know if they do or not, but the job of the Seven Warlords is they're basically pirates that are paid by the government to fight pirates. Right. So Which he's there. I, so fighting pirates is probably why he's there to begin with. Yeah, but then he's also trying to assume like dominance over the kingdom. Right. So he's I trying to I don't think it. they know he's yeah. a pirate. Otherwise, they'd be like, "Dude, you're kind of fucked up." For sure. You know. Well, and he, um, they so can't I, know I think, because he's exactly. like he he keeps himself so secret in the shadows. Yeah. Sure. So I think the citizens just see him as like, "Here's this guy who's doing something against pirates that the king's not doing." Yeah. So he is like inciting this kind of like rebellion, which I, why isn't the king doing anything about pirates? I don't know. We'll have to see if they cover it in Alabasta. All right, cool. I legit don't work. I, I'm not just saying, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been Sorry. a long time since I've watched Alabasta. Fair. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if they cover that <laughs> when we get into it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, um, then yeah, uh, so this world government, uh-huh. um, yeah, yeah, the world government. I thought w- it, it's an interesting thing they bring up, especially because we we kind of touched on it a couple episodes ago. I believe it was in the Whiskey Peak when we were talking about Whiskey Peak. We got into kind of these government factions, and you said something along the lines of you liked that every. You were surprised that the islands in the Grand Line have like different societies essentially within them and that they all seem to be regulating separate from one another um which is clearly the case with certain ones at least i mean specifically little garden obviously it has the whatever this world government is has no control over that um but here we are introduced to a world government and we're told that certain islands are within it and that they so there is this higher government that you had mentioned you I, I don't know if you mentioned that you didn't want it to exist i guess i want to know what your thoughts are that there is this higher government all of a sudden happening so whenever they spoke about this world government um and did flashbacks to it mm-hmm. it struck me as kind of like this united nations type deal okay. where you have all these separate kingdoms and they're just coming together for the interest of like being at peace with everyone yeah which i'm fine with right what I'm curious about is how it, it's, it's dynamics with the government outside of the Grand Line. Because it really shouldn't have anything to do with it, right? Because there's only one way into the Grand Line. You can't really get out. Mm-hmm. Easily, at least. There's a giant whale blocking your way. <laughs> there is. There this is, is something I thought about. Whoever wants to enter the Grand Line has to deal with that whale. <laughs> <laughs> I know every one of them has to deal with that whale. <laughs> Cuz no matter what sea you come from, that's where you end up. So. Exactly. <laughs> so, I guess I'm just curious how the I keep saying world government, but mm-hmm. really it's just like this grand line like United Nations, right? Um, well, I don't fully know. I can tell you that the world government, like, I I assume the world government is outside on all the all the blues as well because the military is kind of like the world government kind of controls the military. I don't know if that's been pointed out yet or not, so sorry if it's a spoiler. <laughs> but I it, come on, it's not that bad. Obviously, the world government controls the military to some extent. Um, I guess I and just so since the military is out there, I think it's more like yeah. you have the world government and then you have the military layer beneath it that's regulating everything a little bit more granularly. So is there a government outside of the Grand Line that is part of the world government but not, you know... So, like, the Grand Line has all these, you know, or is like separate kingdoms, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Is there like this greater kingdom of like the east, west, south, and north blue or whatever? I don't believe so. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know. A resident expert, one piece dig man. <laughs> let, let us know. I don't really know how the blues work in terms of that. Is there, yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, all the islands seemed pretty separated from the world government when we were in the east blue. I'll say that. 
Like Usopp's, I'm trying to think like Usopp's Island didn't seem at all integrated with it. Right, but they were still under the jurisdiction of like the navy and all that. Right, so I think that so is where while it comes in. Yeah, so while the islands are you know their own separate villages and all that, they could still all be one nation. Yeah. Whereas within the Grand Line, all these people seem to be pretty like uh, in, independent of each other. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot more independent for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how the semantics go on that one. Yeah. <laughs> But I will, I, I will give it this. This I feel like this is a more organic way to world build. Okay. Because we're being introduced to it like pockets at a time. Mm-hmm. We're developing our own questions that we're interested and curious about. Mm-hmm. And it's not just like a three-minute info dump of like, <laughs> okay, here's the world government. And here's like a line right. that charts each individual island. This island does this. This island does that. And like such and such. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's throwing little little notes at you flicking them your way like little footballs in middle school yeah when it's relevant when it's relevant for sure and it uh, uh, yeah it 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 asks a bunch of questions and luckily for us i'm too stupid to remember the answers anyway so <laughs> spoilers or not uh, i can't tell you <laughs> um but yeah so it'll be fun um they talk about the reverie which, Do they? Yes. What's at the least reverie? in the manga. It was a backstory from Dalton when he first met Vivi. They, they, yeah. they talk about... There's a couple things we need to get to before we get to fan questions that I want to that I wanna hit. They talk about the reverie, which is apparently... Occasionally, everybody meets. Because all the right. kings were in a room together. And Vivi was like... Because sh- w- Wapple was there. And you also got to see the king of Alabasta... Yeah. In, like, a room trying to Cobra make this piece. Something. Very UN, like you were saying. They were all yeah. there. Um, and Vivi showing that she's more mature than Wapple, which I thought was a fun little dynamic because she was, like, eight years old or something <laughs> <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> and it kind of it was nice that it got brought back. Dalton liked what he saw, and that's why all this kind of was able to happen. It was, it was, mm-hmm. it was, it was fine. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. We don't need to talk about it. Because there's not really anything to talk about. I just wanted to mention. I mean, do you have anything you want to talk about in that moment, or has everything? No, kind of been? no. I thought that was pretty interesting. Like, uh, like, like I said, I'm interested to see how the like this whole world is structured. I guess for sure, for sure. Um, Blackbeard. <laughs> yeah, that's a name that kept coming up. I it's don't name remember. Dropped. Yeah, I don't remember what they were saying about Black Blackbeard. Blackbeard. A few months ago, came to the Drum Island or Drum Kingdom, whatever, and forced Wapple out, essentially. And then Wapple and left Blackbeard's all. a pirate, right? Blackbeard is a pirate, and he okay. very easily forced Wapple out, which isn't saying much because Wapple was a, <laughs> you know, <A> pushover. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then Wapple took all the doctors with him, which is when all this kind of started. Uh, yeah. But Blackbeard was kind of the catalyst of that moment in how Wapple got out to sea. So you get a ma- name beard on, or name drop on Blackbeard. <laughs> What's your thoughts on? Are you excited to see more about Blackbeard? <laughs> I'm sure a we very will. piratey name. <laughs> it is. I I wonder if they'll live up to it. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll have to see. And then, does the word ace mean anything to you? Yeah, they showed. Um, God, this was such a dumb moment. <laughs> It, it was one Tell of the last why. last moments of, of the show. Mm-hmm. The last moments of the arc. Okay. And uh, yep. Straw Hats left. They set sail. Day goes by, maybe. And um, one, just like this no-named red shirt soldier runs up to Dalton and is like, I completely forgot. Check this out. And shows him the, <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. wanted poster. We got approached by a guy named Ace telling him to give this guy a message. Ah, slipped my mind. And then it goes into the flashback of Ace telling the guy, like, tell, <laughs> if you see this guy, tell him to meet me in 10 days at Alabasta. Yep. And that's basically it. That's it. Yeah. It was kind of out of the blue. It was kind of like hamstrung in there for sure. It yeah, happened like, in the same way in the manga, too. He just runs up to Dalton and is like, oh, we forgot to tell him. <laughs> 
What a stupid thing. <laughs> but it, regardless of how it was brought up, it, it's an interesting new little mechanic. Yes. Who do you think this ace fellow is? What's your prediction for this ace who, man? Who is ace? My prediction for who is ace. I'm assuming a friend of uh, the red-haired guy, Red Shanks. You're going to assume he's like a friend or like a An associate. An associate. An associate. Like okay. they're they're linked in some way and I don't know, something there. I think, I think that's where the threat is going to be. With... Wait. Say that one more time. I think the I I think Ace his association with Luffy uh-huh. and why he wants to meet is going to be stemmed from an association that they both have with Red Shanks. Wait, with Shanks. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. Speaking of predictions, I became I I had a busy day today. I wanted to prepare this, but and I wanted to actually show it, but I'm not going to get to. Um. Last week, I said, what is your prediction for Drum Island? (laughs) Do you remember this? Yes, I do remember you asking. I don't remember what I said. You said, I predict that the Straw Hats are going to find a a fluffy object that... (laughs) Like something, I don't remember the exact, but it was like a fluffy object that they get to keep or some shit. And my response was, well, what do you know? (laughs) So explain yourself. What do you know? I know nothing, man. I was like, does he actually know what happens? I I know what your response is. I'll tell you this. Oh, yeah. I, I tell you this. Mm-hmm. I remember having a conversation with you at some point in the past, like, three years about how dumb One Piece is. Mm-hmm. And you told, because you told me about some guy with, like, a noodle fruit. A noodle fruit? Yeah, he turned himself <laughs> into a noodle. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that is all I know about the future of One Piece. That's the only thing you remember. That's the only thing I remember. I wanted I to have a no conversation idea. with you about this because <laughs> I remember that day. It was at Yumacon, and I was trying to convince you to watch One Piece. And I, d- I didn't ever expect this podcast to happen. Um, so I didn't really care about spoilies, and I figured you were never actually going to watch it. So I was more just venting. <laughs> But I was like, man, how much of this does he actually remember? And, like, is it going to ruin it for him? Because I went over a lot of moments. Rest assured, everybody, the only thing he remembers is a man who had the noodle noodle fruit, presumably. <laughs> that, there's something about the ridiculousness, absurdity, and how much that pisses me off that really ingrained that into my <laughs> into my head. That's the only thing you remember, huh? That's the only thing I remember. Right. When, when you asked me what I expected for this... Mm-hmm. And I said something fluffy. Yeah, I was bullshitting. <laughs> I know you were. You're, and I at first I really was worried that you would like read something or got spoiled somehow. But then when you when you had your actual response, I knew you weren't lying, and that you were just throwing shit at a wall and seeing what happened. What was my actual response? Uh, what? That was your I, actual response. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> was that they're gonna find something like a fluffy object or something? And I was like, what the hell is going? here um i will say um there are no more spoilers to be had up until now earlier way way earlier remember when we watched the one piece rap yes chopper gets name dropped in that rap. oh okay so i don't know if that was stuck in the bag of your head somewhere <laughs> i figured you didn't really care but yeah at w- one point they go sanji's cooking chopper's doctorin and it shows Chopper. Okay. <laughs> and so, I guess that this must have been the last arc that <laughs> that that song made it up to. Who knows? Yeah. So what? Um. I. So I have our resident One Piece expert, uh, Digman, also known actually. Now we got a new name for him. Um. Oswald Octopus. Is that is what he's going to go by? Is he's Oswald Octopus's Octopus Corner. 
Um. <laughs> All right. I he sent me his fan video. All right. He, Roast as me, he does. Oswald. But... Whoa! Jesus. The tide is rising, everybody. N three I A S. I don't know how the hell to say that, man. But I absolutely appreciate. Sounded the... like an explosion. That was well. It was the, it was supposed to be a wave crashing because right. I'm a penguin. I got that. Um, <laughs> that. This is history, my friend. You are the very first person to ever follow whilst we've done the One Z Peace podcast. Right on, history man. has been made here today, folks. Um, welcome, 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 welcome. We're gonna get into fan. Good to have you. Questions. Nice to have you. Aboard. Oh no! Did I say we were on Minecraft? Oh shit! I changed the title, but I forgot to change the game. <laughs> Damn it, why Wade. did you why did you follow us when I put it on <laughs> Maybe he maybe he likes what we have to say. Maybe he came for <laughs> Minecraft but stayed for one piece. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but I don't know where the videos are. That's the whole point I'm trying to make here. Is I and Dig actually isn't doesn't appear to be in chat nor is he responding to anything. Um that I ask him. He usually sends it to me on Discord. Oh no. Is my monitor getting burnt? Oh my god. Is it? Yeah. I gotta turn oh, this thing off. Uh oh. Wow. I gotta Maybe. make sure. Oh my god. Yeah, it is. That's crazy. I got words on my monitor background and they're burning into it. Because oh, I shit. just leave it on all the time. I made mistakes have been made. It's very unnoticeable right now. I can't leave them up any longer. <laughs> um, so I can. Unfortunately, he did send me the questions through text, so we're just going to do that. All right, fine. Um, sorry, Dig. If you see this, it is what it is. Um, he was not convinced we were going to get through this arc in one stream. So to you, I say, uh, Alu Hezo. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad we tested it, and we are making good on time. We got 10 minutes left. We got 10 minutes Bring left. It. Shoot me a question. Yes, I, 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 I got I got your question. Anybody in chat got a question for the One Piece man himself? Okay, here it is. This is more, he said this wasn't exact wording, but close enough. Before dying, Hirolok gives an impassionate speech about how a person never truly dies unless they're completely forgotten and vows that his legacy will live on. By giving his final speech, Roger ensured that the world would never forget him and the generation of piracy he inspired will inspire future generations seeking the One Piece. How do you feel about fantasy worlds that have been thoroughly lived in and the heydays of legends being long gone? And do you think One Piece establishes this scenario well? That's a pretty uh, interesting question. <clears throat> it's it's a long one. Yeah. So um, it's probably no secret that one of my like all time favorite pieces of like storytelling is Lord of the Rings, and um, in that world, uh, we're very much living in a in a fantasy setting that the heyday is long gone. Uh, in many ways, the Lord of the Rings is kind of like an end of the world tale. Mm -hmm. It's the end of the livable world for the elves they're trying to depart and for men we have this onslaught of evil who is on the verge of victory mm -hmm. um we're, we're living in a world that's just full of legends and we see that with like the extended universe that tolkien um uh, and his son christopher has been able have been able to put out uh, rest in peace to both of them <laughs> uh, <laughs> um <laughs> So that's that's a world that's built on on legends and myths. I, so needless to say, I love that shit. Yeah. Um, you love legends. I love legends. <laughs> I, I, Do you I mean, feel like I'm, I'm a fan of like establish yeah. that at all though? I feel like it's made attempts to try, and uh, yeah. this gives credit to like your timeline that you've been putting together. Yeah. We see that like the story doesn't didn't technically begin with episode one. There have been events that are significant to what they've seen uh, happening like years and years prior. Mm. We've seen a lot of events years prior, but really 
the only significant one is uh, Goldie Rogers' execution and his One Piece thing. But what about Orange Town being founded? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little higher on the list than Gold Roger. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Uh, so, I mean, I'm all on board if um, One Piece starts implementing more of these elements of hu- significant things in the past mm-hmm. that their butterfly effects have significant impact on the Straw Hat crew. So, But as of right now, we haven't really seen that. We haven't really seen that much. I'm on board for it. You know, keep keep throwing keep throwing stuff at the wall. Eventually, something's gonna stick. Mm-hmm. You know, is I think what we're gonna end up seeing as yeah. the show goes on. Mm-hmm. Sure, why not? <laughs> so you're you're are you optimistic, or I can't tell, or are you not really expecting much? Kind of like this, kind of both, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see it happen. Will we see it happen? Maybe not. I'm not going to hold my breath or stress too much about it. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. But if it does happen, you'd be... If it does happen, I'll be happy. Yeah, for sure. Okay. We'll just have to watch and find out. Uh, One last tidbit Mm -hmm. um, about this. There's this uh, mini-series that came out in the early 2000s called Into the West, uh, put out by Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the coolest Westerns Westerns I've ever seen. I really love it. It's got kind of like mixed reviews, but it's about like um, this legacy of people who set out into like uh, Western U.S. like in the back in the 1800s, and it follows like their legacy exactly. Like the guy who set out, his children, his grandchildren, and it's, like throughout the miniseries, it just follows. Is that it lineage. based on real people? I don't I think so, but it's oh. kind of like it's kind of like the Forrest Gump of the Old West. <laughs> okay. <laughs> where you see all these significant moments in history happen through the eyes of this family. Mm, okay. So, it's really cool. I just wanted to throw that out there. It got me thinking about it. <laughs> that's a that's a wreck. You got a you got a wreck for you there. Yeah. All right. Um I have more fan questions. Do you want to right. hear them? Yeah. We got time, right? Before yes. Um before we get into fan questions, um Oh, actually, you know what? It, it, it Digger's got it covered in, in his Big Digs fan questions of the week. So I'll just start with that because I was going to bring it up. According to Kuriha, Cur- Cur- that's the witch doctor. Do you know okay. how to say her name? No. I'm always reading them, so I never... Kuriha go- is like, as close as I can get. <laughs> Kuriha, uh, Gold Roger used to be called Gold D. Roger. Yeah. What do you think about that? And she talks about the will of D. What does that Will mean? of D. Okay, yeah, this bugged me. <laughs> so I'm sick of... This has happened a couple times before. This is just the latest instance of it happening. Uh-huh. Of Luffy being singled out as kind of like this chosen one trope. Mm-hmm. Where like the spirit of the only one who's made it to the end of the Grand Line, Goldie Rogers, somehow, you know, we're seeing that spirit in, kindled once again in this man-child. <laughs> this and stupid little they, idiot. They've made a lot of parallels with with Gold yeah. Roger and, and, I, and Luffy. The only thing that they see is this spirit that they see in him. Because otherwise, I have a hard time believing that Gold Roger was this, you know, like, adventure first, I don't think about anything, just have fun kind of guy. I, th- I think the reason he was caught and executed was because he was a badass pirate. But we don't know, <laughs> I guess. But We don't. We don't know. We don't know much about Gold Roger at all. No. I, I like to believe that he was a cool pirate, <laughs> not a Luffy pirate. <laughs> well, that's fair. That's fair. But what do you... So you you basically just take it as, the, yet again, another parallel. Gold D. Roger, Monkey D. Luffy. It's this middle initial is somehow making Luffy to be the chosen one and be the next Gold D. Roger. Yeah, it's it's a chosen... I think it's going to be a chosen one trope, and I think that's dumb. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. Um, okay. Wapple mentions that he was frightened off Drum Island by the Blackbeard Pirates. We kind of already talked about this. Who do you think these characters are, and why do you think their connection with uh, real-life Blackbeard will, might be? <laughs> you think they're going to be real-life Blackbeard? Nah, not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's just going to be another obstacle that Luffy will punch his way out of. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe so. 
Um, Not, I hesitate to use the word obstacle. There's just going to be another bump in the road that he'll punch his way out of. <laughs> you think Luffy... So you think for the next 900 some odd episodes, whatever we're at, do you do you think Luffy and gang are going to have any struggles whatsoever? Or do you think they're, there's going to be gonna, a guy who's kind of tough and then they just get through it by punching anyone? It's, gonna, it's just going to be uh, series after series of these artificial struggles where it looks like they're about to lose this fight. Mm-hmm. But then gum gum rocket to the face and <laughs> the whole way through. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Um Do you think Vivi's leadership skills will rub off on Luffy at all? No. <laughs> no. no. Straight no. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> no. If Vivi stays with the crew after Alabasta. Then it's just going to be a lot more of Luffy doing something dumb and Vivi saying, quit doing that. Okay. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> That's it. Um, wait, say that one more time. If Vivi stays with the crew after Alabasta, then it's just going to be a bunch of Luffy doing dumb shit and Vivi saying, stop doing that. <laughs> that might be the sign of a good captain, though. You know what they say, fill in your weaknesses. with the, Surround yourself with people who fill in your weaknesses. Yep, that's the best captain you can ask for. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is. Luffy is the best captain there is. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. I'm glad you're finally realizing. Yeah. Um, I gotta be honest. We're getting better at this. Before in the beginning, we would talk about Big Dig's fan questions, which are all great, by the way, Dig, if you're listening. I love them. But there would be so many things that he would talk about that we didn't cover. We've covered all of these. Which makes me happy. We're getting better at this. Yeah. <laughs> we're 12 episodes in and we're getting better at this. Yeah. We're only going to go up. Um, uh, in this arc, we are introduced to a new type of devil fruit, the shape-shifting zone type. Uh, Dalton is able to transform into an ox and Chopper is able to transform into a human. Uh, what type of animal would you turn into if you had a zone devil fruit? Again, uh, we kind of covered it in a way, though. I'd like to be you an otter. Think it, I think like otters otter? are really cool. I love otters. Why didn't we get you an otter costume? Why didn't that cross our minds? That's just still a sea mammal. That's true. I mean, I like the shark. I, I like, like the, the shark. Parallel I really between like the, the sh- shark and the penguin. Yeah, but I, I feel otter like is a good one to put on the list if, if you know, any more. We get any more in the future, you know. <laughs> yeah, expand the Waddle Cinematic Universe. Yeah, we we got penguin, we got shark, we got octopus. Anything could happen, guys. Anything, Anything could, happen. could happen. Anything can happen in the water. Um. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about all these. Sorry, Dick. We covered them all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a couple of timeline moments. Um, six years ago, uh, we had the Reverie, which we already talked about. Um, yep. And I think it was six years ago was the maybe it was eight years ago was the Reverie. Six years ago was the Chopper, was the Chopper backstory. So that's what was happening on Drum Island six years ago. And there was a couple others that I, who cares. Um, <laughs> I'll show the timeline one of these days. I'm still working on it. Yeah. Also, I just want to throw it out there. Um, as we go through the series, I add the characters to the timeline, obviously, along with their birthdays. S- up until now, I do, well, kind of now. It's kind of been a bit, but not really. Uh, neither of our birthdays had been hit. Neither? Neither. But now... One of oh, us has. One of us has been hit. Yeah. Who 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 has a one one piece birthday? I do. Ah. <laughs> and guess who it is? Is it Kuriha? Kuriha the witch. Yeah. No. Is it the reindeer? You, it's not Chopper. It's not is Chopper. It... I think Chopper's birthday is Christmas Eve. <laughs> uh oh. Did I lose you? Uh oh. This is a bad face. Oh, God. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, no! Oh. Oh, he's disgusting. Oh, he's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> well, folks, it looks like this is how we gonna end it today. Um, He's gone, and he... <laughs> 
will remain like this until the end. He's been frozen cold. He will remain like this until the end of days. Um. Well, buddy. I'm sorry that this has happened to you. Uh, our time, I think our time's up. Oh, Hello? oh, he's back. Hello? <laughs> what the fuck happened to you? <laughs> okay. Unmute yourself on Discord. Unmute myself on Discord? Uh... Okay. Okay. So, my internet died for, like, a little bit there. We saw. It was a glorious <laughs> moment. Um, my Our Zoom call's dead. Oh, so, our Zoom call's yeah, dead. Yeah, I can only speak to Discord unless we re <laughs> reopen that call. Okay. Um, I don't need to reopen the Zoom call. We'll just hang out yeah, here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I think your microphone is set to your ear mic, though, because you're, like, rubbing. I can hear mm. it rubbing. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, that was hilarious that was a great moment you'll have to you'll have to look back on that one i was just oh, I about will. to end it i didn't think you were coming back no oh, that's funny um, your face was frozen in time and it was a stupid face <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about i don't remember oh my birthday <laughs> oh yeah yeah who is it who is it Mr. Zero Crackle Dio! Oh, okay. okay. It's my spirit animal, motherfucker. <laughs> get a crocodile onesie. I was pretty okay with that. I was no, like, damn, pretty good mysterious one. Mr. Zero, bring it on. I thought I, for sure it was going to be like Usopp. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited about that. I will let you know when your birthday gets hit, if ever. Cool. What's your prediction? Who has your birthday? Noodle Man, the only person you know about in the future. <laughs> if <laughs> Noodle if Man was, shares, though? here's my here's my promise. If Noodle Man is my One Piece birthday buddy, mm -hmm. I'm gonna quit doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're just gonna go until Noodle Man gets hit, and then we'll don't be look done. it up now. Don't look up. Look it no, up I'm when not Noodle looking Man it up. comes. I don't want spoilers. Okay. I'm typing them into the timeline as we go. I don't okay. want to know until we hit that moment in the, in right. the show. So we'll right. see. I'll let you know. Um, before we go, we are we are actually a little bit over time. But, you know, fuck yeah. it. It's our show. We can do what we want. Uh, I'm on a prediction for Alabasta. So ne FYI, everybody, next week we're not going to Alabasta. We're taking a break for... The holidays. I mean, it is December 1st. December is a fucky month, man. Maybe maybe next week we should do a podcast about the movie. Because I feel like... Thought. I feel we like we, we could get another podcast in, it, or yeah. maybe two even, because I think the 15th, I'm not going to commit to two, but we could definitely get one in. So maybe we should do, like, the first movie next week. It's a thought. That could be fun. You know, yeah. brainstorming live for everyone to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to do something next week. Okay. Maybe a recap of, like, what we've already done. Like, go kind of back and talk about our favorite moments and least favorite moments. Something. I will, we'll figure we'll, something out. We'll brainstorm it. There will be a podcast next week. We can swing next week. Right? You can? Or no? Yeah. You yeah. Can? Okay. Yeah. So there will be a podcast next week, but it's not going to be about Alabasta. We'll just have to wait and see what it is. Because um, we don't want to get cut off Alabasta around Christmas and then have you guys have to wait a couple weeks to see the end of it. We want to be able to rush through week by week. It'll probably be two or three parts. Um, so that is coming on the horizon. Check out the YouTube channel for all your content. You want some tier lists? You can have them. You want some podcasts? You can have them. You want some highlights? We got them. Check out the YouTube. Subscribe. Once we hit 100 subscribers, you don't have to have your stupid Kobe border anymore. Thank God. <laughs> so, we're going to finish this show. Regardless, what is your prediction for Alabasta? Part one. I don't care. What's your prediction in general? Just give us the whole rundown. How does it start? How does it end? 
Uh, they arrive at Alabasta. They are taken as pirates, uh, but then they're freed because they have Vivi. Um, they the war the civil war ignites, and then they're ha- having to choose their uh, to fight people, um, <laughs> and then uh, they have to fight that one clown guy that showed up. He's, he doesn't look like a clown. He's just very buggy? weird looking. No, buggy comes like, back. <laughs> like Mr. Two. Or Do you something. predict that buggy comes bon, back? Bon yeah, Voyage Bon guy. Clay. Bon Clay. They fight him. Yeah. Uh, culminates in them fighting Crocodile. The end. The end. They sail off and. You don't sail think, off. You don't think the, V's kingdom burns to the ground? Nah. What do you think's the percent chance it burns to the ground? Ten. Ten percent chance. <laughs> that's, that's that's not bad odds. That's not bad odds. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. We'll just have to wait and see. We do have a new buddy on the ship now. What do you, we do? What do, you, what do you think about that? You excited to see what Chopper brings to the mix? Are you happy that he finally has friends? I I mean I I never really got that emotionally attached to Chopper. <laughs> well, if I, he's a heartless being. He hates any animal except Chow Chow, who had the least amount of backstory among any of them. <laughs> so you know, sorry, <laughs> fuck everyone, I guess. We'll have to see where he lands on the tier list because we will be having a tier list this week. We've got enough characters for sure at this point to add some, as well as some new Jolly Rogers. Yes. So I'll stop rambling. You got any final words? No. Nope. All right, everybody. We will see you next Tuesday, not with Alabasta. Thanks for watching the What's the Peace podcast. We love y'all very much and goodbye. Bye. Uh Uh-oh. I can't find my mouse. I found it. Bye.